Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at uh, the effect of flaps on landing distance. Now a lot of folks out there go, oh you can use flaps, you don't have to use flaps, flaps are good, flaps are worth it. You've probably heard some of that discussion more than once, and uh, it's kind of worth to kind of do a little bit of experimentation to see what happens. So for the purposes of our little experiment here, I'm here at uh, KTEX, this is Kilo Tango Echo X-Ray. It's a really, really neat runway, and uh, not going to lie, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a ski jump. Uh, if you've never flown into here, by the way, uh, this is a really, really, really cool airport to fly into, because if you try to land on this thing, it's like, woo, trying to get the plane under control. But for us, it's going to work perfect for the purposes of demonstrating exactly what happens if you use all the flaps, none of the flaps, and kind of experiment. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So now another thing I did in this scenario, you probably caught this out of the corner of your eye, is the fact that we're in extreme altitude at the moment. Now one of the reasons I picked the extreme altitude is because it's going to make any effect that a flaps have basically get multiplied. Now if you actually look, my current speed right now says I'm doing 72 knots, but I'm actually doing 90 knots or so. Now if you look at my poor mixture lever, you can see how far back that sucker is. It's uh, not looking so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a standard lap, a standard procedure first, and uh, see what happens. So I'm going to come on down here. I'll go ahead and uh, dump all three notches of flaps. I'm going to push that throttle almost all the way forward to keep this thing airborne at 65 knots. And um, we're just going to kind of do a regular landing and kind of see what happens here. You can already see why I love this airport, because uh, not only is it stupidly dangerous, but not even the PAPI system is lined up properly. Now, for all those who, uh, who are familiar with high altitude airports, uh, remember that the approach speed you use is the same indicated approach speed that you would normally use. So this is kind of fun. So there's this little tiny little mountain right here on your right that you basically got to get over the top of, and then you can kind of come ripping down here. So again, we put our flaps all the way down to 30 degrees so this would be considered as well, standard of a landing as you're going to get at such a funky little airport like this. There's my big old 2.7, uh, 65 knots, looking pretty good so far. Remember, this runway goes downhill and then uphill, which again makes everything way more fun for us. Over the uh, threshold, I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle to zero. Keep in mind, we're still doing like 80 knots here. So we're going to suck up a lot of runway and pull that nose up. And back tires first. And we're down. Go ahead and hold the brakes. Again, I use the same braking force each time so that we can be a fairly realistic uh, kind of representation. Man, that is fun. <laughs> I'm glad it's not windy today, though. All right, let's see how we did. So with full flaps, uh, you can see uh, there's a 1,000 footers, so about 1,000 foot. It's called 1,000 foot. Uh, what do you want to be? About 1,500 feet? I think that's a fair representation here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same approach, but uh, this time we're going to leave the flaps out. Alrighty, uh, we're looking a little on the slow side here. Uh, the first thing I'm noticing is that because I'm approaching with no flaps, my nose angle relative to the ground is significantly greater than it would normally be. One of the great advantages of flaps is they basically cause your center of lift to shift so that you have to actually hold the nose down in order to maintain the same situation. Now, a certain aircraft, uh, that's an incredibly exaggerated effect, such as if you're flying the TBM. Okay, so I've got no flaps right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back to zero here. And this plane is uh, just does not want to slow down. You know, I could probably coast it all the way down to the ground right now. There's about 65. We're going to go ahead and do a big change of power here. And we're going to do even more bigger change of power because, again, we're at very high altitude. Get about 65 knots here. And we'll do it a little bit stronger. And I'm going to have to push the throttle all the way forward. Oh, boy. There's a big old number 27. We are over the threshold. Throttle to zero. Nice and gentle here. Hold that. Oh my gosh. Float. I'm not exaggerating. This is literally what the plane's doing. Oh, sorry, wheels. All right, hold down the brakes. <laughs> it just did not want to stop flying. Holy smokes. All right, let's see how we did here. Oh, okay, full stop. So uh, if you remember, the first landing uh, put us uh, right here. Our next landing with no flaps, even though it was the same speed, uh, put us all the way down here. So we got a thousand footers. That's a thousand. Okay, so it almost doubled our landing distance here. And again, I used the same speed, same approach angle, same technique, everything. Now you're probably going, okay, so obviously flaps uh, shorten your takeoff of the distance, or our landing distance. Uh, you'd be absolutely correct. And again, it made it easier to see out the window. So um, what happens when the wind starts getting a little interesting? So um, let's mix it up. All right, we're back up in position, kind of holding here in the air. It's a holding pattern, kind of like a helicopter. Let's uh, go ahead and make things a little bit interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'll put that cloud layer away here. Put this cloud layer pretty much right at where I am. Now, the wind, of course, is a 275. That would be much too much fun. Let's go ahead and make the wind come popping out of the south here. Uh, we'll do a nice, uh, let's make it interesting. We'll do a 17 knots, which is the maximum demonstrated crosswind for this aircraft. Again, making it fun for me. Uh, the gusts, I love these gusts because they're kind of like at a funky little angle here. So we might as well leave those in. You know, why not? Okay, so now we're competing with a really bad crosswind, like a legendary bad crosswind at high altitude in an aircraft that's not really designed for this kind of an altitude. Let's find out what happens. I'm going to go ahead and pause. 
the first attempt we will do, whoa, <laughs> I'm just sort of sinking. The first attempt we'll do is, oh, we'll go ahead and now use everybody's uh, favorite regular, good old manufacturer's recommended flap setting here. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself a little bit more airspeed because uh, we are just like sinking here. I'm literally at full throttle and the engine's going, oh, I'm working on it. Give me a minute, there it goes. Okay, oh my gosh, look at how high that nose is. Let's go ahead and uh, bring down our flaps. One, two, three. It's going to get us 30 degrees. The old Cessna has actually had 40 degrees of flaps. When you put those suckers down, that plane did not want to, uh, it did not want to stay in the air. It was really, really weird. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a good old-fashioned crab here. So I'm going to kind of point my airplane to the left. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, go back and forth until we're able to kind of get ourselves nice and stably acquired. Remember, we're at the maximum demonstrated crosswind for this aircraft. So, whoa! <laughs> That's fun. So this is the absolute upper limit of safe. Again, in a real world, I don't know that I'd even try this because this is just too dangerous, even with that much runway. So I'm getting a little on the high side. I'm going to pull my throttle back so we can lose a little bit of that nice altitude that I've accumulated here. 66, 65. I'm at completely at zero here, and I'm still just kind of skidding. So unfortunately, um, we just cannot slow this plane down. Don't so I'm going give it a quick little slip. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't that looks pretty good. Don't and we'll go ahead and bring that back to neutral. And now we're in a little bit better shape here. All right, let's put ourselves down on the ground. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is sketchy. And we're going to come down nice and hard. Right foot. All right, the last second. Okay, now control with your feet. No looping, no looping, no looping. Oh, my. And full stop. Okay. So, not the greatest technique, but it looks like we only added about 200 feet to our landing roll, which is not bad. So, um, let's go ahead and try that again, but this time, let's kick the flaps out. All right, here we are again. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull that throttle all the way back. I'm going to retract my flaps. Now, we're going to do the same process, but this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do it without any flaps. I'm actually going to slip the plane here because I'm just a little bit too high. So, I guess this is going to become a wing low landing. <laughs> That's all right. So uh, what you don't see is my right foot is pushed all the way forward. <laughs> Again, it slows me down at the same time as it kind of helps keep me lined up the runway. So the first thing I notice is I cannot slow this airplane down. Again, that's one of the kind of downsides. They're not having some kind of flaps here. I'm going to kind of line myself up the runway. Oh, my. Oh, boy. My, this is sketchy. I'm literally, my right foot is all the way forward. I come swinging down here, 65 knots. Again, we're flying a little bit of wing low action here. Oh, I don't like this in the slightest. All right, there we go. There's the runway. I'm going to go ahead and hold it. Nessa, notice how high my nose has to be in order to keep it. Okay, here we go. Down. Full brakes. Interesting. Hmm. So if you remember, the last landing we did ended up right about here, and our final one ended up right about here. So this is an interesting situation, and it kind of shows why you know you have to be thinking about these things. So what are the conclusions we can have here? Well, first of all, if uh, you can use flaps, use flaps. Uh, they're definitely going to reduce your landing distance. As far as controllability goes, um, when I had my flaps deployed, I found it just slightly more difficult. Oh, this is a weird sight, by the way. Uh, it was slightly less controllable, at least kind of in my kind of perception here. Uh, the other thing we noticed, too, is that when we did introduce that really, really strong crosswind, having a little bit less flaps made it just slightly easier to control, except in both cases, when our flaps were retracted, it was actually more difficult to actually see the runway, which, you know, that's going to bring its own hazards. Obviously, we have a pretty darn long runway here, so that's not as big of an issue. If I were at an 1,800-foot runway, which would have ended right about here, that would have been game over on almost every landing now, it's just something to kind of think about. All right, so hopefully this is helpful. And again, uh, when you're going to land the plane, uh, use what the manufacturer represents. Obviously, if we're in a bigger plane, flaps are completely mandatory regardless of the conditions. Enjoy.